evening and welcome to this uh, time of prayer on this Wednesday of Holy Week. As we reflect together on the story of Jesus and his last week leading to his death and resurrection. This night we reflect on one of the most moving stories during Holy Week. A spontaneous act of love and devotion by a woman who goes unnamed in Mark's Gospel, but in John's Gospel is identified as Mary from Bethany, who anoints the head of Jesus. It's an act of generosity, extravagance and beauty. And yet, by others, it is one that is seen as wasteful and is criticised. Mary, however, is the faithful disciple in the Gospels. Her actions and uh, are prophetic and Jesus encourages us to remember what she has done. So let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we turn our attention once more away from ourselves and the day behind us. We turn to you recognising our hunger for your living word, our thirst for your life-giving spirit, our need of grace and mercy in all of our lives. Grant us your forgiveness and peace that this time of prayer may be good for us in our whole being, body, mind and spirit that our whole lives may rejoice in Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We find the story in Mark's Gospel, uh, chapter 14, and reading from verse 1. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth, and to kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there, who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor, and they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Amen. Our meditation from the Iona community. It was on Wednesday. It was on Wednesday that they called him a waster. The place smelt like a perfume department. The department of a big store. It was as if somebody had bumped their elbow against a bottle and sent it crashing to the floor setting off the most expensive stink bomb on earth. But it happened in a house, not a shop. And the woman who broke the bottle was no casual afternoon shopper. She was the penniless, poorest of the poor, giving away the only precious thing she had. And he sat still while she poured the liquid all over his head, as unnecessary as aftershave on a full crop of hair and a bearded chin. And those who smelt it, and those who saw it, 
and those who remembered that he was against extravagance called him a waster. They forgot that he was the poorest of the poor. And they who had much and who had given him nothing objected to a pauper giving him everything. Jealousy was in the air when a poor woman's generosity became an embarrassment of their tight-fistedness. That was on the Wednesday when they called him a waster. As the woman held nothing back but gave all that she had, in generosity she sacrificed and poured out all that she had in anointing Jesus. So we pray that we may offer to God all we have this night. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this story that is told every Holy Week for this woman's generosity in anointing you. So we offer to you, Lord, all that we have this night in worship and adoration for you are Lord. And you, Lord, are the healer, peacemaker, forgiver, saviour, prepared to face death for us and for all the world. We pray tonight for ourselves. That your Holy Spirit may come to us this Holy Week and open our hearts to receive from you salvation and peace. In response, may we be enabled to pour out our love for you that we may not hold back but seize the opportunities we have to love one another. Lord, as some around the table criticised the woman and were quick to rebuke, we pray for those whose hearts have become spiritually dry, for those who are constantly negative and those for whom materialism has dulled their spirits. Lord, we pray for a kindling of the Holy Spirit in their lives, a fresh generosity of heart and a realigning of value. Lord, as Judas Iscariot left that room and went to betray Jesus, watching for the opportunity to hand him over, we reflect in the silence how we also betray Christ. Faithful God, forgive our foolishness, our lack of faith and our holding back from a whole life commitment to Jesus. Touch our lives with grace and mercy and protect us from temptation. Amen. We join our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord our God, at the ending of this day, and in the darkness and silence of this night, cover us with healing and forgiveness, that we may rest in your peace and rise in the joy of your presence. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.